The next thing we're going to want to do is be able to add any number of items to our to-do list by using this add to-do form. Let's make a new component called add to-do form. In our add to-do form, we are going to import react from react, export const add to-do form equals, we'll have some props, and we are going to return a form. Our form will have an input of type text. And this can just be self-closing. And then we'll also have a button of type submit. And this will say add to do. Great. So for now, we don't know what props we're going to take. Let me just go ahead and say there are no props here. And we'll say this is react.fc. Uh, OK, so let's bring this into our app and just make sure it looks OK. Right below our to-do list, we will add our add to-do form. And currently takes no props, so we can simply do that. Open up our browser. And yeah, we've got our add to-do form. It doesn't actually do anything. It just kind of submits the page on add to-do. So we now want to wire this up so that we can add a to-do. Within our add to-do form, we can maintain some internal state that just kind of keeps track of where our input is. So we can say const new to-do and set new to-do. We can use use state and we can give it a string. Uh, by the way, you can just let it infer uh, that new to-do is going to be a string type because of what you pass it by default. Uh, you can also use this generic here to guarantee that it's a string. And so if you did something like an array, uh, it would be mad at you. But uh, I think it's probably fine for us to just let it infer the string type from what we pass to use state. OK, so we can say that the value of this text box is going to be new to do. And if we go back to our application, well, now we can't type anything in this text box. So we can add a change handler to our input element. And we can say const handle change. And this is going to uh, take an event. And we'll have to make sure to specify this of type change event, which we can automatically import from React. And then. Uh, this change event, we can pass it a generic for our HTML input element. And now we can say that on change, we are going to set new to do equal to e.target.value. And if you're familiar with React at all, uh, you've probably seen this before. So now we can say on change, let's make sure that we use our change handler handle change. Go back to our application. And now, of course, we can do stuff here. Uh, we're not handling the submit yet. So if I hit submit, yeah, the page just kind of refreshes and doesn't use the value that we've given it. So let's go back and create a submit handler. We are going to say const handle submit. And this takes an event. We can say form event takes a generic of HTML button element. And so what are we going to do? Well, first, we are definitely going to prevent the default form submitting. But next, we're going to have to do something that adds this value to the array of to do's that we already have. So we don't actually have that functionality wired up yet. So we should probably go back to our app.tsx file. Let's go back to app.tsx. And we can use our set to do's again. But what we'll do is just create a new handler here. So const add to do equals new to do. And this will, one will be pretty easy. We can say set to do's. And we can simply spread our existing to do's, then add our new to do. And our new to do is actually going to be of type string. So Let's, uh, let's actually say that here. 
And now we're actually really benefiting from TypeScript because we've forgotten that we can't just add a string to our to-do list. We actually have to add an object that has text of new to-do and then our default complete value, which we're going to assume is false. If we're adding a new to-do item, then it can't possibly be true. Great. So let's make sure to pass this add to-do to our add to-do form. And now our linter is not happy because we're not supposed to have this add to-do prop on add to-do form. Of course we want it, so let's go back to add to-do form and let's create an interface for our props. So interface, add to do form props, and we want add to do. And what type is this? Well, we are gonna have a new to do that is of type string, and we are not actually doing anything with the output, so it's just void. Of course, once again, we have now sort of declared this function's shape in two places. So we're gonna take this and put it in our declarations file. Let's go back to our types.d.ts and we can say type add to do and add in our new function. And okay, let's use add to do now both in our add to do form and also in app.tsx. We can say this is of type add to do and we can remove this redundant uh, type setting here. Great, so go back to add to do form. Uh, we are going to pass the add to do form props as the generic here. We can destructure out the add to do. And then now we can use our add to do here within our handle submit. So we will add to do and our new to do text. Save that and make sure that on click for our button, we'll use handle submit. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to uh, our React app and say, write a to-do list application, add our to-do, sweet, that looks great. And now we can mark it as complete or not complete. Of course, it is not complete because we see a few issues. One is after we add it, we should probably clear out this uh, box Another could be that we don't want to be able to add blank to-dos. Let's go back to VS Code and handle these two situations. After we've added our to-do, we can probably set our new to-do to just be a blank string. And let's go back to app.tsx and we can use a short circuit that will only add a to-do if the new to-do is not uh, trimmed down to be equal to an empty string. So we can say, new to do dot trim not equal empty string then set to do's so let's see our app in action so write a to do list app add that it clears out can we add any blank ones nope so now we can say we are done writing a to do list app